is this the best AI tool on the market right now? I'm Professor David Stuckler, and you, that collectively wonderful YouTube community, has been asking me for more videos and trainings to separate the AI wheat from the chaff. Not just AI that's gonna get you in hot water because you bent the rules and you feel unconfident and doubt yourself because you think it might be slightly unethical, but AI that's used in the right way to do what's uniquely computer oriented, to support what's uniquely humanly powerful, to help you feel smooth and confident in your journey to becoming the best researcher you can be. And also of course, completing, ticking the boxes along the way, like publishing lots of papers for many of you. So I had a student in our community, Louise, write to me, I want to share the following. SciSpace is a game changer. If you have not gotten your copy yet, ask yourself if you're investing in your future. When students come to me and say something like that, I've got to go check it out. So that's what we're going to do in this video. And in so doing, I'm going to show you some of the uses you should stay away from, from this tool, because it could get you in hot water and the right way to use it that I do think after looking at it, uh, is incredibly powerful and can save you a ton of time. And I wish I would have had this tool. I, I will just kind of give you the down low. I like it so much that we have negotiated a discount code for any of you who are interested in it uh, up to 40% off check out that link in the below again I'm not sponsored to make this video I'm just responding to what I think are some really helpful tools you're going to get value from. So let's head over to SciSpace and see what the hype is all about. So head on over to SciSpace claims to be the fastest research platform ever all in one AI tools for students and research and you can discover papers for your research. So this is turning into a substitute for that good old fashioned Google Scholar where you type in a question and SciSpace is going to go through its set of papers to find answers fast. Now, I, what's on the tin here, I actually don't recommend because it doesn't have a complete set of papers available. I, it, the algorithm it's using to organize puts you in a little bit of a filter bubble, what it thinks is going to be most relevant to you. Um, so this doesn't really work for a lot of the literature reviews you might want to do. That said, there's a lot of power. And if you look at the sidebar, you'll see a menu of different options uh, from AI detector to extract data to chat with PDF. And you can also use this on chat GPT. I think what's really powerful here are three of these, the chat with PDF and stroke chat GPT function for engaging critically with a PDF. I'm going to show you that in a second. The second that's really powerful is for extracting data. I'm going to show you how to do that. This you can upload a batch of PDFs and start spitting out information that might be useful for you in your literature review to create an extraction table to generate very quickly uh, clear insights from a lot of complex literature and spit them out in a standardized way. It, it just saves you buckets of time. And lastly, also this AI detector, which is increasingly becoming requested has a lot of false positives. And this one I've actually tested out and I'm quite pleased with. So I'm going to show you all three. So let's go first to chat with PDF. So yeah, I'm going to scroll down to popular tools and come here to chat with PDF. And the simplest way I've got one here from a systematic review I've been working on, um, just drag and drop it in. All right, upload file. Now, this is going to pull up the PDF on one side and your copilot, which is essentially ChatGPT, which you can use to interrogate the paper. I personally love this interface because if there's something difficult, I don't understand the methods. You can just highlight the section and ask it to explain it to you so that a third grader would understand it. Super helpful. You can save these snippets to a notebook for taking notes, really valuable. Um, you have a lot of standardized questions, but you can really ask anything. So if I want to understand, right, what new evidence did this produce? What did this show? The topic of the research question we're looking at is the what did it show in terms of the impact of commercial determinants on sexual reproductive health? You can pop that in here and it's going to spit you out a nice answer very quickly. That's going to save you time. So you'll see in our other videos and literature reviews, we talk about forensically extracting information that you need to drop into your review. This does just that and saves you kind of that hunting and pecking and trying to find it forensically with a scalpel yourself. ChatGPT is doing that computer powered heavy lifting for you. Let me show you the example here. So one simple example here and it works pretty 
quickly, pretty seamlessly, and we'll spit that out for you. So let me give you this example here. What new evidence did the paper provide on commercial impacts on sexual reproductive health? And uh, it's going to highlight certain aspects. But what's more, and what I really love about this is you, instead of hunting it yourself, it will locate in the PDF where that is and highlight it. So I can actually see here, this is just the conclusion. So around there, that's maybe not what I want. I want to go to more of a results section. So here, this is now highlighting here. This is in the meat of the paper. That's perhaps uh, more interesting to me where it this is a lit review, but it's highlighting more of its original new evidence in this part of the paper. The point is that this will help you focus like a laser beam right on what you need so that you don't get yourself drowning and buried in endless reading of stuff that you're just cramming your brain with useless information. And hey, if you're like me, there's only so much that you can absorb or even want to absorb. Many of those details, important, uh, correct, can end up distracting from the good stuff that you need to focus on. So this is very powerful. The second way you can do this is it has integrated directly now into chat GPT. And so you can take that same paper and upload it into their SciSpace Hub. Now, bear in mind, I am using the completely free version at this point, and that just gives you a sense of the power it has. Now, this is what I was worried about before. It has 287 million papers, which sounds like a lot, but is still a partial set available. And that's why I still, at this point, officially recommend uh, Google Scholar for the process of finding papers. But here you go. You can upload the paper, and this is going to give you the TLDR of the paper, just that, that short bottom line if you, you didn't want to read it all. Um, and it will enable you to ask the same questions. I personally prefer the interface previously, but some people want this integrated right into ChatGPT. Also tapping the power of if you're engaging with ChatGPT for other questions about your literature review, um, you can tap that overlap from ChatGPT now being able to learn from ongoing parallel conversations that you have. So that's a chat with a uh, PDF function. Let me go to the second, which is linked to this, but takes this power and puts it on steroids. So if we come back to home, you can go here, right to extract data. And I've already pulled up the tab here. And in this case, you can drag and drop multiple PDFs, and this is going to upload it to your library. So what I've done here is I've just taken all my articles that I've searched and found from Google Scholar elsewhere and dropped them right in. I'll show you that again, just because it only takes a couple seconds, it's super fast. I'm gonna upload these 22 files. And then it's going to give you the potential to ask questions, not just from one, but from all of these papers for a rapid synthesis. This is a way, I mean, essentially when you're doing a literature review, you are summarizing an entire field and getting a collective sense of what does this huge body of evidence say? What are the, the gaps for future research? What do I need to know? And what's brilliant here is you can ask these questions about, hey, what are the gaps for future research? Hey, I need to extract certain information on the impact of government interventions for my lit review paper. Summarize that for all 22 of these papers. Uh, so let me show you an example of a summary here that I did of this that was directly linked to the systematic review I was doing. So here I popped in the question, what is the impact of commercial determinants on sexual reproductive health outcomes? It's going to go through and it's going to still these to the top sources, but in the advanced version, you can adjust this to include more sources. And it's going to give you a really, really nice summary here. And this can be really helpful in doing a literature review because it can be a North Star. It can help you focus on well, what are the big messages coming out of this theme uh, on my topic. Um, again, this is only going to work if you have a well-defined topic. If you don't have a well-defined topic and you're all over the place, these tools aren't going to help you. Um, they're going to save you time if you have the nuts and bolts of your review already in place. I've worked with many students who get a kind of AI anxiety because they don't have those nuts and bolts in place and they start going in circles and AI just leaves them feeling unconfident and confused, and that's because they're not deploying it in the right way because they haven't mastered the fundamentals. Um, if you are interested in that, join our Facebook group, get in direct touch with me. Getting the right topic accounts for about 90% of your success, and uh, let, let's have that conversation and connect you to the right training for you. But this gives you a nice focus here, and you can see on each article, it's gonna give you the bottom line, but what's more is you can choose specific things to extract. So I'm not really interested in uh, this bottom line of the paper, I might say, I want the methods. What methods did they use? Was this a qualitative paper? Was this a quantitative paper? And this is gonna pull this up uh, just while we're doing this here. 
And uh, here, for example, I can see, uh, you know, this has done an okay job of pulling this up. Let's uh, take a look. We can scan through the columns like this and just bounce through one by one. I'm going to get rid of this because I don't think this is particularly helpful. Um, and you, some of them here, this is a little bit disappointing. Some papers, and, and it may just be these are review papers, so there are no methods re reviewed. And so those might be out if you're looking for original papers. You can keep going through the 22 papers that you have. So I can see that this is doing a series of case studies and it's review. Um, this will usually spit out if you've got a paper that's doing a survey, if it's doing a, a set of interviews, right? This one here is doing a kind of lit review and telling us bits and pieces about its methods. Um, so that can save you a bunch of time. The other thing that I like to spit out too are findings. Now these are, look like mostly lit review papers. So that's gonna be a little bit uh, less helpful in this case. But if we come here, you can spit out the results column. And I find this particularly useful because you're tapping straight into not just what the paper's interpreting or saying, but what is kind of the meat of the evidence that that paper reported. And here we go. Again, it tends to not have the precision or specificity that I sometimes want in an extraction, but um, it does usefully help you to find things that you can then go as before and locate in the PDF. So if this is what looks, if it smells right, if this is what you're looking for in your review, ah, I'm, I'm interested in the counterfeit medicines aspect, I can click here, it's gonna take me right to that PDF where that section is that I can go review and extract further. I hope you can see this is just gonna save you a bundle of time. Finally, let me come to the last bit that I think is really useful, and that's the AI detect. Now, I've tested a lot of AI tools before, and they generated false positives to where I popped in some of my own work and my students were teasing me saying, well, maybe you are a robot, because it was saying 25% AI written, and it was a text that I wrote back in 2018 when AI didn't exist. So uh, it can sometimes mistake good technical academic writing for it's just too good, it must be AI. Uh, but let's look at a paper here, and this one I've tested out. And for plagiarism, not gonna help you. There's other tools we recommend for that. See some of our other videos um, that I've linked below. Um, but we can add in uh, here some PDFs. Again, living in a world where, here, let's take a 2015 one. Drag and drop the paper, here we go. And see what it comes up with. There should be no AI in this paper. Um, so if we see false positives, there is a problem. Let's go ahead and click analyze. Now this uploaded. Uh, again, relatively quick tool. Um, and if you are using any chat GPT to help paraphrasing, we have a video on the right and wrong way to use chat GPT in your writing. Um, this will help you. Um, I, I, I recommend using chat GPT as a sounding board, as an editing tool, but never to do original writing. And this paper, lo and behold, gets uh, completely human, 0%. That's what I like to see making this, in my mind, one of the more powerful AI plagiarism detectors. I won't go through and show you the full stress test I've done on this. But uh, again, this is completely free. If you wanna tap some of the additional power of more advanced modeling and analysis and have more tokens because you will eventually run out of tokens here, then I do recommend upgrading to the full version. Um, my students have gotten tremendous value just with a freely available version that you can see here. But again, we've got a discount code on it and I'm gonna keep reviewing these. But for now, in my book, this gets an eight out of 10 for the functions that it offers in terms of t one of the best for chatting with a PDF, one of the best for extracting data, although you do need to supplement it, has great value for locating things in the PDF for further inspection and analysis, and it can help you identify things quickly from a broad set of papers like gaps um, that can help you move forward in your work. And lastly, the AI detector, for my view and for my money, is one of the best on the market. And for the vast majority of you, um, to use that ladder, the AI detector, uh, just use a completely free version. Anyway, guys, we're gonna keep coming uh, in response to your request with more AI videos and help you to use AI in the right way without feeling that AI anxiety and imposter syndrome that I've started to hear many, many students feel. And if you want us to review a particular tool, do get in touch with me and uh, we will make a dedicated video for you uh, until the next time.